the Nashbandi order, uh, the immensity of energy and that energy is achieved through the sound. Our life is about how to raise our vibration in a world in which everything around us is literally trying to lower the vibration. This vibration that we have is our protection. Physical and spiritual protection is based on the shield of energy that we naturally emit around ourselves. Even the earth itself has a shield of energy, what they call I think the Van Allen belt. I think 60,000 miles of radiation around the earth to shield it like an impenetrable wall. And as we are a, a replica of the earth, we're a symbol of that reality that everyone has their own earth just themselves. Where Allah I'll show you the signs upon the horizon and within yourselves. The spiritual paths come to teach the importance of energy to transcend certain da dogma and words that people may have confusion about and go towards the equal denominator. The equal denominator in all practices, all religions comes down to energy. If you're building it, congratulations. If you're losing it, you need to seek help. So tariqahs and Sufism is their science, is energy. That how to build your energy, how to build your vibration to protect yourself against sickness, to protect yourself against every type of negative attack and all documented with science. Even the simple fact of turning on your microwave at home, you're under attack because the megahertz and the energies that are coming out, they're not good for the cellular function and brain function of humans. Nothing against microwave companies but as an example that everything in the house because we wanted it to be electronic and because we wanted all these technologies, they're all sending vibrations everywhere. If you wear your earplugs or ear pods, it's cooking your head every time the phone is sending a signal to it. So scientifically they know everybody's being bombarded with negative energies. If negativity accomplishes the ability to lower our frequency low enough, you lose hope. You lose your God-given ability to protect yourself to be positive, where people become depressed and hopeless because the shield of energy that when it drops, good God you're under attack by immense negative energies and that's why a lot of spiritual people like sci-fi movies because you see a lot of, oh I understand this, that if you don't have a shield coming up what happens? All of the orcs and creatures are trying to attack and because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. There's so many creatures in our existence. So many waves in our existence, many and most of which we don't see. You turn the signal on the TV, that's infrared red. So there's a signal that comes that moves that channel. So just because you don't see it, you don't say, Shaykh, I don't believe you. Everything around us you don't see it anymore. What is the, the Bluetooth signal that comes? What frequency is that? What effect does it have? So it means everything is an energy. So everything begins to affect us to become more and more negative. 
Why? Because anything deficient of positive becomes negative. If I pull the positive from you, the default is you'll become negative because you don't default to positive, it just doesn't keep flowing into you. So if we pull the positive from you and deplete you of a positive charge, you're worse than the Tesla. What they found as soon as the Tesla had no charge, you couldn't even tow it. At least with the other engines you could push it down the street. Now you're stuck, mm. it's symbolic, God gives us a sign, say, yeah you're worse than that. If you let your energy droop, nobody can move you, what they call depression and anxieties. Nothing, nothing seems to matter, nothing seems to be important. It's the deficiency of energy with everything around us. So it's not going to recharge ourselves just because we want it to be recharged. But there's a system in which to recharge the battery. Recharging and the battery for human beings is their soul. So our life is about raising the frequency. Whoever thinks they can raise their frequency, more power to you. And if you can't, you seek out the people who work with energy and how to teach the energy. So one of the greatest gifts that God gives to us is your breathing and your chanting. Feeding the body is good for your belly, but feeding your soul requires a different sustenance. So those whom contemplate and meditate, God gave them a power source free everywhere. And they say that there were people whom once lived on this earth and they knew that reality because they used to make everything with copper, right? They would put copper lines up and pull the energy that was in the air. It was free. When they plant, they put copper wires. Their pots and dishes have copper wire, antimicrobial and antibacterial because the energy comes into it. The energy in your body is related to the copper within your brain. Everything of these realities used to exist, but now nobody talks about it. It's been depleted and fell apart and then everybody's anxious and depressed. There's no energy, no hymn of what we say, no zeal to, to, to do anything. But God gave us, it's very easy, very free. The energy is all around you. So then you breathe, contemplate, tafakkur and meditate. That when you sit by yourself and try to meditate and contemplate and asking God, please send an energy to me, my energy is deficient. Everything around me has been pulling my energy. Then we see the wisdom and the hikmah of the prophetic way was then the reality of water. Wash off and burn the negative energy because if you're going to sit and meditate you have to be clean first because you can't meditate with negativity. So wash it, wash, water becomes your best friend. And then the Prophet describes on Allah Wasallam, if there's no water use clean sand. Oh and they found out now that sand neutralizes energy and a deep reality of ourselves. So even just the use of sand if you can't get to water just to neutralize any type of bad energy. But the main reality is that you wash and begin to meditate and breathe and asking the Divine, I need to connect your power sources that exist in every single atom of creation. And as soon as we breathe we call nafas rahmah the breath of the Most Merciful. Because as soon as we breathe with a conscious understanding that I want from Your Divinely lights and, and grace to begin to dress me. And as soon as they breathe, they bring in the mercy of God within their heart, their breath that dresses their blood, 
the dress is the iron within their system and nourishes their lungs and their heart because your lungs will take the breath, bring all of its purities, you'll exhale its impurities and the benefit, the light and the nazma will go to the heart. And that energy dresses the heart, stamped upon the blood and nourishes all the organs. And when they take a life of breathing, contemplating, they begin to train themselves not only receive the breath, receive the energy, receive the qudra, slow your life down. Because the people who meditate, they begin to slow the process down. That what is everything for? It's not about conquering this abode, but to build the castle in the eternal abode. So then they inspire people because other people absolutely don't care what I'm talking about. But those whom the Divine inspires, they have a hunger and they have to eat only that reality. So they search for it, search for it, search for it until it begins to quench that hunger. No, no, that's what I want. I want that sustenance. My soul is bringing me to receive that sustenance. I have to learn how to breathe, I have to learn how to connect to energy and because of the overwhelming tide of negativity, I need a representation. You know the cable is everywhere, available for everyone. But unless you know how to hotwire the signal, it's difficult to get cable. So you call the cable company. They put a little bit of equipment, they adjust things and they bring the connection so that you can receive this Divine Grace we call fires. This is the role of the shaykhs and the guides, is that an overwhelming tide of negativity that I haven't yet reached that grace, I haven't been able to connect to that grace. The role of the shaykh and the guide is what? Is a cable guy. That he comes and by the mere presence and by the teachings begins to push away the negativity and begin to teach you how to make a connection to your own reality. It's all by the permission of the Divine. So then they learned, they breathed, they accompanied the guides, they understood, they watched and educated themselves based on energy and realities. And as a result they learned how to breathe, they learned how to meditate and they learned how to keep the connection with the guides so that their energy would be around them and help them. The tariqahs know, the Sufi understanding knows. Everything's based on sound. So when we praise and when we pray upon the prophetic reality, the Divinely reality, the prophetic reality, immense vibration is now happening on your cells. Positive energies are being called upon, positive energies are being asked for, are being dressed upon the soul and pushing away every type of negativity, it's the law of energy. If you call upon positive, it pushes away negative. If you go to positive associations, they pull away the negative charge off of people. If I go to a negative association, they take my positive charge. The negativity around pulls the energy. You come back completely depleted. You can shower, meditate, and build yourself back and build your understanding back. This becomes a daily routine in our lives to meditate, to breathe, to have a mantra chant and, and du'a that you're reciting. The salawats that we recite are immensely powerful and as a result they build their energy and they build their reality. to wash, keep ourselves in wudu, to sit, 
in an area that we make to be clean, we connect to feel our heart and begin to make our istighfar, asking for forgiveness. This is an internal wudu and then begin to make our salawat, recite three times Surat al-Ikhlas and asking for the madad of the shaykhs and madad al-haqq, asking to be connected with the truth and we begin to sit and say that I'm nothing. And as I'm asking for this connection and making my istighfar, asking Ya Rabbi that I'm nothing and I'm asking to be in the presence, وَكُنُمْ ma صَادِقِينَ From the command of your Holy Qur'an that keep the company of truthful servants and have a taqwa and consciousness. As you have ordered Ya Rabbi, I'm trying to keep their company. Allah's words are not for dunya but for all of eternity, itasimu bihablillah and tafaraq means at the same time Allah reminding them hold tight to the rope and don't separate. So many, many verses of the Qur'an inspire within our hearts that keep the company of these heavenly servants and the servants of a light reality, a wave reality. And as a result we sit, we're in wudu, we're sitting, breathing, we have an area, a space that's clean, we put a beautific fragrance, the angels like the fragrance and we look to our heart, we make our istighfar, we begin to make our ikhlas and asking for the connection. As we're asking for connection and realizing I'm nothing, the Ya Sayyidi, send your light into my heart and let that light to dress me and bless me. It's such a simple process but I don't know why people have to make everything difficult in their mind because the waswas of shaitan, as soon as they want to sit it take two seconds that they connect, Mother Sayyidi dress my heart, Mother and feeling ourselves to be nothing and that the light of the shaykh begin to dress and to capture my heart. And this is a, a rabita, a connection and asking for that connection. And once we understood this is the foundation of all tafakkur. Once I've understood that and every day I do that, after every salah I pray my salah, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And again asking for the madad that the shaykh dress upon me and that I'm nothing, send your faiz and either I can begin to breathe. When I breathe a light that begins to come into my heart and exhale all my badness. Breathing light into my heart and exhale all my badness. Or another type of meditation when we sit to meditate and to make our tafakkur is we do our awrah. Because we want the awrah to be connected, if it's a time that we can do the awrah in a ample time for meditation we go again through the basic is you make the connection, you have your wudu, you make your connection, you sit and contemplate and you start to do the awrah. The Naqshbandi awrah it's on the app, you say your three shahada and again everything in the presence of the shaykh, Asha Muhammad and you're building a relationship in the world of light with the shaykh. You're saying that I'm always with my shaykh and that my shaykh is always with me. So oh, how do I know that the shaykh is always with me? It's because you have to feel that you're always with the shaykh. Means what you put into it, you get out of it. If you don't ever think of the shaykh then this is from your fault. So our faith is to say that I'm always feeling the connection to the shaykh. I'm asking to keep that connection. When I go for my salah and it's time for salah, again quickly I make my madad, I make the connection, I feel the presence of the shaykh and in that presence I'm praying. Praying to Allah and with the dress and the light of the shaykh and that I'm nothing. I sit for the zikr nights, same thing, I have my wudu, I make my connection. Then I sit and I say, it's ready for the zikr time, I turn on my zikr 
and I'm in my madad of the shaykh, asking to be in the dress of the shaykh and then making my salawats and visualizing, visualizing myself in their jama'ah, in their association that I'm right there in the presence of the shaykh while they're doing the salawats and I'm doing the salawats. As soon as they begin to talk and the shaykh is talking, again my connection to the shaykh and my heart is connected. And as they're speaking, I'm writing and taking my notes. You can keep your eyes open and take your notes with your heart to be connected. Everything in this way is based on that simple action of having wudu and making istighfar, Surat al-Ikhlas and after your wudu you pray two raka salat al-wudu to seal and to protect yourself. You make your connection and it becomes a life process. Everything is in that madad. That always to be with me, always your dress to be upon me, it becomes like any other thing in life that you don't leave the house without it. You don't leave the house without your keys, you don't leave the house without your, your, your clothing. This is your spiritual clothing and you never go anywhere, do anything without this spiritual dress. So the guys can make a nice video on the intro to Muraqabah. Very easy, don't let shaitan make your head to be complicated. You know they, they want to give a fatwa on how to peel a banana. I don't think humans need to, to know what is the legal jurisprudence of how to peel a banana. But this is the beguiling of shaitan, make everything complicated. You know they have instructions on a shampoo bottle, for what? You don't just open it and pour it on your head? <laughs> so everything is easy. The connection is lifelong process, madad, madad, I'm always in the connection, always asking for the presence of the shaykh, inshaAllah. In this life of ours it ends here this talk, Bi Muhammad al-Mustafa wa Siri Surat al-Fatiha.